So Australians are off to the polls in just four weeks' time, and if you don't go, the government will fine you. Because in Australia, you see, we have a compulsory democracy. That's right, we force you to participate in the democratic process. For we are young and free. Yeah, not so much. Not free to not vote, are we? Anyway, another quirk of the Australian system is preferential voting. In most other countries, you cast your vote for your party or candidate of choice, and if your candidate or party doesn't get elected, then that's it. Your vote is done with. However, in Australia, voters number candidates on the ballot paper in rank order of choice, one next to your first choice, two next to your second, etc. If your first choice candidate is not elected and no candidate receives half of the vote, your vote is re-examined for its next preference. The point of the system is to elect the most preferred candidate rather than the simple majority required for first-past-the-post voting. In essence, it means you could come, say, third in the primary vote and still win the seat on preferences, as happened in the seat of Blair in Queensland in 1998. In that particular contest, Pauline Hanson was ahead of her nearest rival by more than 10 percentage points based on the primary vote, and in front of the eventual winner, Cameron Thompson, by more than 14%. But because she didn't have more than 50%, the preferences kicked in. The Nationals' preferences went to Thompson, which put him in second place, eliminating Labor, and Labor's preferences went to the Liberal Party, getting Thompson over the line. This is one of the reasons many people don't like the preferential voting system, because parties can do preference deals to make it harder for parties they don't like to get elected, in this case, One Nation. But an examination of the pros and cons of preferential voting is a whole other video. So on to the question of who to vote for. Currently, it looks as though the Labor Party is on track to win. Not because they're particularly popular. Bill Shorten is about as popular as a fart in an elevator with the electorate, but more because the coalition has done a masterful job of destroying itself. The latest news poll suggests a swing of about 2.4% to Labor, which would earn them a healthy majority in the lower house. And that's how we tend to view our elections, as a contest between Team Red and Team Blue. But there has been a trend in recent elections of minor parties playing a bigger role in Australian politics. This chart shows the primary vote that is before preferences for the major parties going back to 1980. As you can see, the vote for minor parties has increased substantially from the 1980s when it polled no higher than 8.5% to the last election in which just over 23% of the electorate cast their primary vote for a minor party. In 1998, One Nation burst onto the scene grabbing almost 8.5% of the vote and pushing the vote for minor parties over 20%. By 2004, One Nation's share of the vote had fallen to just 1% and they vanished from the political scene in 2007. But every election after 2007 has seen the percentage of votes going to minor parties increase to almost one in four voters in 2016. And this speaks to the general dissatisfaction with the two major parties, not an uncommon theme in many Western democracies today. The latest news poll says the primary vote for the coalition and Labor is even at 39% each. The essential poll has the coalition at 38% of the primary vote and Labor at 35 So if we take the midpoint between those two polls, that means something like 24.5% or about one in four voters, is thinking of voting for a minor party. In the recent New South Wales state election, Labor and the Coalition garnered a combined 75% of the vote, meaning 25% voted for a minor party. So who are these minor parties? Well, there are about 55 minor parties registered with the Australian Electoral Commission, but of course, given that most of them are very small and don't field candidates in most electorates, there are only a few worth talking about. That said, the left loony party, better known as the Greens, aren't really worth talking about, but we have to mention them because right now they command more of the vote than any other minor party in Australia. News poll says they have 9% of the vote. Essential poll says 11%. They also have nine federal senators, but that could change at the upcoming election. Sarah Hansen-Young is one that has an uphill battle to retain her seat which is great news. One Nation has dropped significantly in the polls in the last few weeks, but they still command about 4% of the vote according to News Poll and about 5% according to Essential. It remains to be seen just how much damage has been done to the One Nation brand after the recent Al Jazeera scandal. So those are the two largest. Then we have the Centre Alliance, which is Nick Xenophon's party. They managed 1.85% of the national vote in 2016, and they currently have one federal MP and three senators. There's the Australian Conservatives, for those looking for a centre-right alternative to Labor light Liberals, led by former Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi. Bernardi is a federal senator, and the Australian Conservatives have three upper house state members in South Australia and Victoria combined. 
And then there's my personal favourite, the Liberal Democrats, a broadly libertarian party with one federal senator, Duncan Spender, who took over from David Lionholm earlier this year. And they also have three state upper house members in Victoria, NWA. Now, there are plenty of other parties I could have mentioned. Feel free to mention your personal favourite in the comments below. But one objection to voting for minor parties is, well, they can't win. So why bother? Well, they definitely won't win a majority, but they can hold the balance of power and influence the passage of legislation. Remember, in 2010, Labor was forced to form a minority government with the help of four independents that pledged their support for Labor on confidence and supply. So if you're one of those independents, you can exert a hell of a lot of influence. The same can be said for the Senate, where the Greens, with nine federal senators, have unfortunately had a great deal of influence. And that's why I urge you to resist the temptation to get artistic with your ballot paper and make sure your vote counts whatever party you choose. Now, if you look up in the right-hand corner of your screen, there's a poll question asking whether or not you will vote for a minor party at the upcoming federal election. So if you could take a few seconds to answer that very scientifically constructed poll question, it would be much appreciated. And I'll see you next time.